So, hi everyone. This is the second session of the Nebula program. Today we are um, we we have the second module, the first module, the second session, which is the ethos of open science. And with us today we have Ezra um, as a facilitator. Ezra has graduated from the pilot cohort, and we're really happy to have him here uh, facilitating the meeting. So I'm going to pass it over to Ezra to do all the uh, housekeeping and welcome um, part. So hello, everyone. Thank you, Irene, for giving me the opportunity to facilitate this session. I'm very glad to be here. Uh, last, year, last year, we had an, an interesting session with the previous batch that was the pilot cohort. It was very interesting. So before we start the session officially with our first speaker of the day and our first activity, I would like uh, to first of all remind us that the code, again, that the code is going to be recorded and transcribed. We do this because there are some people that may not be available at this time. And the videos is going to be published on YouTube so you can get the recording if you are unable or for some reason to leave the meeting before the end or if you did not join. And secondly, you can get the captions via Zoom also. Just look on the buttons on the lower end of your screen and you can click on CC to activate the captions to have a lifetime, a real-time transcription. So for the as the code of conduct of the community of open life science, if you experience or witness any un unacceptable behavior, feel free to reach out to us or to send an email, maybe to Irene or to any other coordinator or facilitator that you meet. We really value uh, your presence here and we like us to go through these activities and these wonderful experiences with open science in the most sane of ways. And also I would like you to also indicate beside your name with a W if you are more interested in participating on reflection-based sessions or breakout homes in a written format. Or if you like to go for spoken format in video, you can add an S. This is very helpful because when we distribute the participants in the breakout homes doing the activities, we like to put people in places where they are more comfortable. And this helps to increase our overall engagement. So without any further ado, I would like to introduce uh, Virginia, the program expert for today. She's going to present about the ethos of open science. And I'd like to give her the floor so she can tell us about herself better and introduce our first session. Hello, Virginia. Hi there. Thank you, Ezra, for the introduction. And thank you, Irene, and everyone in OLS for inviting me to participate. So my name is Virginia. Uh, I have been part of OLS training before and was lucky enough to participate in the previous cohort with Ezra as a participant. So really nice to see this coming as a circle and also to get to meet new participants. So. Uh, if it's okay, we could start. So let me share my screen for a second. And yes, here. Let me know if everything's working correctly. Yes, it's fine. I Perfect. can see your screen. Great. Thank you very much. This will be a short uh, presentation for now because, well, as Ezra mentioned, today we're going to be talking about what is open science and what it is important. But actually, to start, we would like to know about you and what do you think open science is? And for that, we created this word cloud for you to fill with two or three words that come to your mind. So when you think of open science, what do you immediately think about? And it would it's a great idea to do this at the beginning before actually starting the lessons. So then we can repeat it once you have done, gone through all the sessions to see whether there are some new words appearing there, some that change the importance. So we will give you uh, some minutes for you. I don't know if maybe Irene or Edras can share the link through the chat. Okay. Awesome, because I'm not seeing the chat right now. <laughs> uh, so,
yeah, the link is in the chat. Awesome. Um, So maybe if people could do a hands up reaction when you have done to get an idea. Once you're done. Oh, they started coming. <laughs> There's no correct answer, don't worry. It's just an introduction and a brief exercise to just relax and see what the imagination brings in terms of open science before actually starting this program. Is there a question? Sorry. Did someone raise their hand? Yeah, I can see one raised hand. I'm not sure if that was a reaction to completing oh. the task. I think so, because now it's a it's, it's sound. Okay, um, perfect. And we have also some answers in the Zoom chat that I'm going to add to the cloud. Oh, perfect. Uh, yeah. Great. So I'm seeing several thumbs up and um, heavy check marks. So. On your side, um, does it look like the word cloud is being filled out? Great. Uh, okay. So let me know when five minutes have passed. I think there's still one or two more minutes left. Yes. Great. Awesome. Okay. So, Ezra, Irene, do you think it is time. Yeah, we can proceed. Excellent. So I will be sharing with you the results afterwards. I will stick it in the presentation, which you have a link to the slides shared in the notepad. And after the cohort call, I will get a screenshot of everything that you've been incorporating. Maybe we could give a bit of time for people who couldn't be here uh, and maybe to feel it before actually uploading it, but yes. It's a great idea for you to see what you thought open science was and after this cohort to let us know at the end, what do you think it is? So a bit of a roadmap of what we will be doing today. So the session will be divided actually in two parts. First, we'll be discussing a bit about what is open science, looking at some definitions, motivation, and the who does the open science. And then we will be go a bit further on why is open science important and how it can benefit different aspects, either in career, science, and society. And in both cases, we'll have some just small exercises for you to reflect on these uh, things that we will be discussing. Uh, but don't worry, they are really short and it's a great way to hear about you and what you think of. So let's begin and let's start with defining what is open science, if there is a definition at all. So basically, as you know, this module is based on the NASA TOPS cohort. Um, so this is the definition that they share in their module number one of the ethos of open science. And bear with me, it's a bit of longer uh, definition, but we'll get to it. So the definition uh, that the NASA TOPS program shares of open science defines open science as the principle and practice of making research products and processes available to all, while respecting diverse cultures, maintaining security and privacy, and fostering collaborations, reproducibility, and equity. So lots of important concepts, lots of important words. Uh, the idea is to go one, small part of it at a time. So we'll break this definition down a bit. 
So this first part of making research products and processes available to all reflects on this idea that science in itself shouldn't be just for the experts or the researchers or the scientists. It should be to everyone, to everyone who is part of the community and of this world. And particularly and especially if those research outputs come from uh, public funds. It also reflects on this idea that we should respect the diverse cultures. We ourselves in this uh, cohort calls are people from so many places in the world with so many different cultures. And it's really key to foster an open dialogue between not just researchers, uh, but also to recognize the indigenous people and the local communities that are involved in all of the research. And doing this uh, by respecting the diversity of laws and customs that we have in different countries. It also says that it's important to maintain security and privacy, which can be kind of weird if we are talking about open science at the beginning, but it's true that there are certain information that is case sensitive, especially for example, when you are dealing with information from people. So although open science strives to be as open as possible, it's true that not everything should be open and caution should be taken in this regard to maintain the security and the privacy of people involved. And last but not least, this idea to foster collaborations, reproducibility, and equity. So researchers would generally know the first two words in terms of collaborating with different researchers and also being able to reproduce, to do again uh, the research processes that someone has done. But the last part, I think, is one of the most important ones. And it's this idea that it's key to include people who might not otherwise be left out. So uh, that science and open science can be done by everyone and not just the ones that have financial resources, for example. And basically, I thought it was really cool. This summons the idea of open science. This acronym, this word idea, which basically reflects on what's behind this definition of open science, which is open science as something that it's inclusive, diverse, equitable, and accessible. So um, we will go back on this a bit further in the presentation. And as I told you before, there is actually not a correct definition of what it open science is. Since this is multifaceted and it includes being diverse by itself, um, there are many different definitions of what open science is. Here you have a few of them besides the one that we have just talked before. And not only this, maybe you will feel more comfortable with some aspects of open science than others, and that's more than okay. So the idea of open science has to be there, this acronym that we told you before, to be inclusive, to be diverse, accessible and equitable. But basically, it may seem it may happen that you have uh, that you have more balance to one definition than to another, and that's more than okay. It's whatever works best for you, but that keeps the values of what open science means. And what about the motivations and goals? We will discuss a bit more about this in the second part. But basically, um, incorporating open science practices enables greater transparency in what is the scientific process. This idea that you can see not only what is being done, by who is being done, and that is out there in the open. This makes scientific knowledge much more accessible, not just to the scientific community, but also to the public, and helps combat this misinformation that can happen whenever research is done behind closed doors. It also facilitates reproducibility and it enables collaboration and inclusion. And I like this idea of communities working together on a problem that could maybe solve that problem more rapidly, find these new results and validate them in a more robust way. Whenever more people are working on something, uh, these different experiences come together and actually do a greater thing. So I'm sorry, I'm having a tea because I have a video code <laughs> and I apologize if I have to stop everyone now and then. And 
okay, we've seen what it is open science and a bit of their motivations, but why now? Why hasn't this been the norm before? <laughs> so basically, it's thanks to these digital resources like the internet that have eliminated some barriers for digital collaboration. So now we know we can share emails, we can share Google Drives and so many other tools, many of which we will we will go further in further sessions. And this has opened the possibilities of sharing knowledge and processes as open science uh, was defined for. Unfortunately, as it says before, some barriers have been eliminated because there are still so many challenges for some people, like for example, the lack of computational tools, of internet connections, and of course, as a non-English native speaker myself, language barriers can be <clears throat> really hard, especially if you don't know the language. And now we go a bit to, who oh, actually does open science? And one will believe that it's just the researchers, but it's actually so much more than the researchers. There are so many other participants that we would call stakeholders, which are affected by the outcomes of open science. And they can also affect open science in itself. So not only we have researchers, we have policymakers, technicians, data managers, educators and mentors, and citizen scientists, for example, which try to take all the science to the civil society itself. So basically, um, there are so many people involved into in open science and it can be a bit overwhelming, but it's also this idea that it's not just the researchers and everyone has a part to play. And it's not as simple as it seems. It's not only who does the open science, but there are also interactions between science and society, which I would like to believe that in general, uh, in terms of open science practices, these are advantageous interactions. And just to give some examples, for example, researchers do the science and share their results with policymakers, and they should, um, and the general public to inform their decisions with eventually the idea is to improve their lives. Um, also the public helps to fund research through taxes and can provide input to future areas of study. Or policymakers help to implement measures <clears throat> that are informed by scientific results to improve health, environment, and liability of society. So now we come to our first exercise, which is a small exercise uh, in terms of what we will be doing. The idea is to introduce yourself and mention what type of open science stakeholder are you? Are you, for example, a researcher, an educator, <clears throat> a data manager, a technician. So Estras and Irene, if you are able to open the breakout rooms. Yeah, just a quick reminder that for us to open the breakout rooms, please add your preference. If you want to participate by speaking, add an S in front of your name. If you prefer to participate by grading, then add a W in front of your name. Um, yeah, and if you're having a bit of trouble um, changing your name, you can add it in the Zoom chat like you, some of you are doing, and we will change it automatically. Um, so let me... Um, is this, can you help me change the names of people to add the S or W as they are putting it in the chat? And um, yeah, I think we're also a little ahead of time so we can make this a longer activity now. Awesome. Um, okay. And I am. I am opening the brick of rooms in a moment. Um, I'm going to post the recording for for now as we do the activity and as we sort out this 
technical, uh, yeah, yeah, technical bits. Yes. So, welcome back again from the breakout homes. I really hope you had a great time there. I popped into some rooms and it was really interesting to see what the participants were discussing about. They were sharing the ideas and what they believe about the topic of the day. And at the same occasion, I would like to invite maybe one or two people from each of the rooms to just open the mic or just write in the comments something that they discussed about with their fellow mates in the breakout homes if they like to share with everyone. We really want to give the opportunity to like one or two participants to say something, so you're welcome. Hello, everyone. Hello, Edmond. Yes, uh, so thank you very much for giving me the call. So uh, first of all, I'm very happy to be part uh, of us today because uh, it's my first time to participate in the same open sales. So for me, um, as I worked uh, during this uh, room session, I think personally but, uh, that uh, it was very difficult for me to, to respond in this question because uh, I'm a researcher uh, in the beginning my uh, to begin my career and uh, I'm also uh, I work at a ministry of uh, the environment and uh, sustainable development so uh, my uh, main work uh, is uh, my main job is uh, uh, head of a department, and uh, my second job is uh, 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 as a lecturer at the universities. So I bring the uh, uh, these two kids to to tell me that that I'm also a researcher and uh, I'm a worker. So I try to link uh, these two domains. Uh, That's professional uh, world and uh, okay thank you very much okay you're welcome Edmond thank you for this insightful information about yourself we hope to maybe some days have you in collaborations to work on interesting research projects I can see that um, Alan has raised her hand up you can open your mic and or video and speak if you would like to. You can open your mic, maybe. Okay, thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Hello. Uh, <coughs> my name is Alan Trinamasco, and uh, I have completed uh, my degree in mechanical engineering, and I'm waiting for graduation in January. So I am. I'm also a graduate intern at Uganda National Oil Company. And uh, as an intern, I'm supposed to show my immediate supervisor that I, I really want to stay and probably get better opportunities at work or promotions. So I'm supposed to show that I'm thinking and I'm contributing towards innovation. Yeah, so, sure. So within the company, there are several challenges that that lead to uh, contributing to high high costs. So I could say that I managed to 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 observe that uh, generation of waste, like after this, a certain the in, the the engine, we have a generator at work, and uh, it requires lubrication in order to function properly. So as a result, the engine generates waste oil that is in turn dumped. And then we have to buy new oil to actually replace it. 
So my idea is to actually recycle that waste oil and replace it instead of buying, probably maybe recycling would be a cheaper price instead of buying new oil. So I'm currently working on a proposal to find out the treatment methods that I can use to treat the waste oil to, in order to obtain new oil from it and restore the original properties as equivalent to that of new oil. Yeah, so I believe I'm a researcher, <laughs> though uh, entry researcher. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> my challenges are that uh, in, in Uganda, um, companies that have actually carried out this uh, waste engine oil recycling are not, do not have, uh, do not expose their work and it is, they are far away from my region. So it is hard for me to access. I can't leave work. My boss can't allow me because I have to be here. Sometimes we are very busy. So okay. you know, to, I, even when I try to access them uh, re remotely, let's say via their online pages, I do not get any response. So I tend to rely on international re uh, literature that I actually also don't get response. So I watch YouTube videos, how the thing is being done. So that's, that's the challenge. And uh, also, uh, the time the time dedicated to the research is minimum. Most times we are working and by the time I want to do my research, spare time to do research, I am already tired and I end up doing spending little time in the research, which I believe actually needs also sufficient time in order to complete the proposal. And so okay. with all that, I believe I have introduced myself. Thank oh, you. well, that was great. Mm. Thank you very much, Alan. And as a graduate of this program, I can guarantee or I can assure you that you really going to have answers to all these questions and together we're going to find uh, solutions to the challenges you're facing because there's really an ecosystem here that has been designed to support aspiring researchers or people that want to engage into projects just like yours. So before I pass the mic uh, to Irene, I saw her hand up. I would like to invite Good News Sandy. She raised her hand as well. Hello, Good News. If you can open your mic and Okay, nice. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Uh, please pardon me. I think I maybe... Uh, the question was as regarding what we had in our breakout rooms, like the discussion. Even yes, before, yes, right? yes. <laughs> yes. I think I... Yeah. All right. So I, just to share quickly what our section was like in the breakout room, uh, we had four ladies to deck. I think we were all ladies because of us, I don't know. But we were there and we talked about our different roles and uh, most of us uh, are roles in open science communities where researchers, software developers, we have people that, you know, also come in for community management and also people that educate us too. And yeah, so we talked about our different roles and how we are, the work that we do. And we still had a couple of time and then we talked about how we are going to, how we intend to apply the lessons from the program to the work we are doing. And we just had a brief discussion because we had a couple of minutes left while waiting to go back to the main section. We just thought we should just chat about different things and expectation. And for me, it was really interesting to learn from, from them and seeing the expectations from the program and how they tend to you know have these lessons and apply it to their work. Yeah, so that's how it went in our section. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Good news. That's great. I think we have about some time more for one more reaction. If anyone can just raise his right or open his mic and tell us something that he liked or appreciated or what he learned or what happened during his break at home session, this group. While waiting for someone to show up, I would like to maybe ask Irene to say what I saw her run raised up before.
yeah, I was, um, I wanted to connect the contributions that people were sharing with the results of the work cloud. So maybe uh, we can move to that activity. And we still have another another activity later for more people to to share. Uh, but yeah, Virginia, do you want to share your screen? Yes, I will do so right now. And we have the result here. Let me just put present mode. It takes a bit. Yeah, we, we can see that. And awesome. uh, I'm going to read out loud some awesome. of the, yeah, some of the answers. Like I see the biggest um, words, which are the most common answers are collaboration, collaboration and transparency, um, accessible, open knowledge. Uh, but we also have some other interesting results. For example, we have uh, public, we have public engagement, we have uh, network, we have opportunities, we have um, education, um, access, again, we have learning. Um, and I think all of this, um, like open, open science really goes beyond research. Um, I was hearing some, the contribution of Edmund about working not just as a lecturer, but also if I heard right in, in the Ministry of Environment. Um, and so open science also applies to uh, public engagement and to work that goes beyond universities or academia. Um, because this sharing access, sharing knowledge and sharing, you know, access to information, it really, like information is not only happening just in academia, it's happening also in different types of work, in work that is done at government organizations, is done at organizations that are nonprofit and that they still are working on building networks. Um, so I'm, I'm really happy to see all of this kind of uh, answers to the work cloud. And as Virginia was saying, hopefully as you go through the program, this work cloud will become bigger and you will get to see different perspectives of open science that are not only um, about research. And maybe Virginia here can also share a bit about her experience working um, not just in university, but building networks and um, I think also your current work that is not exactly in, in a university, but is still working in open science and sustainability topics, actually. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna now pass it over to Virginia to continue her presentation. Yeah, well, thanks. Yeah, one of the things that I really wanted to highlight, and we will talk about this a bit more, but you are here already on participating on an event of, of an open science uh, practice community, community of practice, sorry. So uh, that already speaks so much of what you want to do and the changes you want to bring. So I find it really awesome that each time we have more and more people joining this movement. And we will be discussing in the second part why is open science important. So this comes perfect, Irene, as, a, as an introduction. So. We'll start the second part now. Let me just share my screen again. Sure. And okay, I have <laughs> there. Let me just start the presentation. And does everything look good? Yeah. Awesome. Let me just hide the controls, which are also always annoying there. <laughs> Great. So now we will start with the second part of why is open science important? And bear in mind that just as with the definition, there is not just one why, there are many whys, and you can be more relatable to one than to another. And you could also have other things why it is important that aren't mentioned here. But this is just to give like a... Uh, an idea, a uh, bigger picture of what can open science, uh, why is open science important? So let me just check this. 
Great. So this starts with this um with this acknowledgement that in the current times we face challenges which we some known about them and some are unforeseen in terms of environment, of diseases, and so many things that happen in our daily life. And these are dynamic challenges which change with time and places. And we have seen that it's, there's not one correct approach to uh, tackle these challenges, but rather we need like a new approach, something that would help us achieve success in a responsive and inclusive way. And this is mainly done through the scientific ecosystem, which is not just scientific, it's not just researchers, but they could be um, the place to start. And also uh, something that we want to highlight that we have talked about this before, but the key component here of having diverse teams, of having people from many backgrounds that could help complement what we know, what we can think of, and that is definitely a key aspect to achieving uh, real open science that can be helpful and accessible and equitable for everyone. And actually, open science could benefit so many people, not just you, not just science, also society. So it has benefits at different scales. And when we go from the smallest to the bigger, what types of benefits uh, open science practices can have for you? And the first one is actually one I could speak for myself and I think many here <laughs> can also uh, feel relatable to. Basically, uh, you are your best future collaborator whenever you generate well-documented products, whenever you describe the processes, what you're doing, when you're working with code, why you are doing that, which are the variables that are you including, or oh, so many options. But yes, being able to uh, document this not also allows it to better be reproduced, but also it allows you in the future and using some open source um, tools where to store this information, which you will see later on in other sessions. It allows you also to never lose access to this information and not just you, also the community, because this will be based in an open platform. So this is one of the things that I find most useful in the day-to-day -day time in terms of the benefits that open access has to you. Also, this idea of give and getting credit for what you do, since this will be in open platforms, this can strengthen the scientific community and actually also reinforce this idea that we can be people working in different countries and from different disciplines, and yet we have shared values of what we want and want to expect from society or shared goals in common of what we want to pursue. So that's a really good idea and also a great value that comes from sharing open science. And of course, the idea of having things up in the open gave them more visibility and can create a higher impact. Not only it can increase citations if you're working on a scientific paper um, or code, but it could also help you gain new collaborations with people who are maybe far away. And this can be also within or in different disciplines. Um, I wanted to bring you an example, for example, uh, from my behalf. I'm a marine biologist and I worked with fish ecology during my PhD. And we were working, trying to study the growth of fish, how they grow uh, according to the month of the year. And we were made, um, someone told us that we could access, for example, this data of satellite sea surface temperature, which was available on NASA and one could access it because it was open. And that was something really interesting because we know with that temperature is something that may affect fish growth, but we didn't know how to use it because we didn't, we weren't there all the time the fish were there. So we could use this data that was actually used by oceanographers, for example, and use it with a different purpose. 
which also created this collaboration between different disciplines. And there are so many other benefits that open science will have to you. And one of the things that I didn't mention here, and I think is also one of the most important, is the feeling of <clears throat> once you join open science practices, you join also the communities of practice that strive for open science. And that is one of the most important things for me. Uh, you are here, as I told you before, so that is already awesome. And you will get to meet so many other cool people who also share their data, their resources, their knowledge, and are actually the basis for a good change in society. So that would also be a huge benefit for you as well as for society in general. And what in terms of the science itself? So of course, we already talked about <coughs> the importance of doing transparent and reproducible science, and also more accurate because it allows people to check methods and results and see their errors in the process or in the results. And this definitely makes results, scientific results more robust. Um, in this regard, it could also help to improve scientific literature because it could also improve the trustworthiness if someone is able to reproduce the results. And this could mitigate publication biases. And something really cool is that it could also lead to more discoveries, the fact of making our science more open. Since we know that collective knowledge can accelerate the discoveries made and also is more effective in many cases than individual efforts. So there is this example of a solar and heliospheric observatory, which was actually manufactured and created to see the sun and its explosions. But then planetary scientists found out that this same tool could actually be useful for other things like spotting comets. So also having this in mind that you never know what you are creating or the information that you are putting there in the open, what can it help create discovery? There are so many uses for the same things that maybe we don't know about, or yes, that people that come from other background can think of using the same data for different things. Similar to what I was telling you about using, for example, the temperature to analyze fish growth. <laughs> and last but not least, there are so many benefits for society. In first place, uh, increasing the public trust and understanding of what research is being done, along with more citizen scientists and non-expert involvement in the process. This idea that is science for everyone, and not just the researchers, literally for everyone involved. It also attracts a diverse set of participants. And we are mentioning the idea that someone from Argentina, where I'm from, or from Japan can access the same codes, the same structures, the same processes. It's a really um, appealing uh, way to get people from everywhere from the world to try to solve something or create a response for something. So it really definitely helps maximize diversity in whatever project uses open science practices. We've talked a bit about making efficient science and how you can make scientific results more robust, but this can actually have other anticipated uses and also research waste can be avoided if we have science in the open. And we can, for example, not repeat uh, an experiment that has been done and that that takes money from funds that come from society. So that money could then use, be used for other purposes. And also, and one of the highest and most important things of working together with different people, this idea that working together can accelerate the pace of science. This idea that when we include ideas from a broader community, from people with other backgrounds and other knowledge, 
can come with a better and faster solution. <laughs> Sorry. And a great and current example for everyone here is <clears throat> the rapid response to the COVID-19 pandemic in which academic publishers were committed to open access policies. And this actually helped accelerate um, the distribution of information and reach better results to tackle the ongoing pandemic. Um, and this was thanks to a collective effort of making results and information out in the open. So as you can see, the benefits of open science are so many, and I imagine that each of you have so many other things in which open science can be helpful. And of course, there's lots more of information. This is just like a short version of, to, we wanted to bring you about what is open science, what is important. But remember, you can always access the full NASA TOPS open science curriculum. I left the link there in case you want it. And it has so many other interesting um, examples of things that we have talked about before. There's also this really cool handbook by the Turing Way to reproducible, ethical, and collaborative data science, which I recommend. And there are so many other uh, more options online. Some of them usually are shared during in the Slack channels. But yes, I would invite you to explore the options online and to look because in general, there are certain communities of practice from so many backgrounds. And maybe there are some really close to you and you don't know it yet. <laughs> but well, um, I think that is it in terms of the presentation. And I know I'm ahead a bit of minutes, but this is actually better. So you can have a bit more time uh, to actually do this exercise in which we would like you to think about how could your career, science or society benefit from integrating open science into new or ongoing projects. And there is a space for you to share these um, in the notepad. There's also the same uh, assignment there. So if you don't remember what the question was, you have it right there on top. Um, I don't know which line number was it. Let me check. Oh, I can see it, but it's closer to the end. I don't know if you see the line number. I know why I can't see it. <laughs> but well, basically, um, this is the end of the presentation. And of course, feel free to reach out for whatever question you may have. Um, and thank you for being here. It's such a good thing to know that there are even more and more people that want to do more open science. So I will stop sharing. Why can I see? Oh, there, stop sharing for now. And um, the exercise. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Virginia. Thank I think you. Irene is right now working on distributing the different participants in the various breakout rooms. It's going to be really fun. And I would like to remind everyone that as you are discussing with your group, you can also feel free to share the insight in your discussions in the notes so that everyone can have access to it. This is a form of report of the meeting in a way that even people that did not attend, they can actually get to see the discussions that happened and learn from them as well while watching the video to put everything together. Yeah, so I'm going to open the rooms for seven minutes and then um, we will be we will be here back uh, at around 11.20 or like at the 20, um, whatever, whatever your time zone is. The rooms are open. As as you're muted. Oh. I learned the sound too. Yeah, sorry about that. So I was saying welcome back to everyone. I hope you had interesting discussions in the various breakout rooms. And 
as usual, I would like one or two people from a breakout room to quickly open the mics and share with us some of the things they discussed about the question that was how could your career science and our society benefit from integrating open science into new and ongoing projects. And I really want to thank also the people that have been taking notes on the path that is interesting. And if everyone, anyone has something to share, please feel free. I see someone raise the hand up. Could you please open your mic and speak? Okay, Magak. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'm, I'm Maga Kadel. I'm joining from Nairobi, Kenya. Yeah, so uh, I'm, I'm a marine geologist. And uh, uh, when we are talking about uh, integration, especially in open science, then uh, we are sharing especially the coordination between researchers, uh, the public, and also uh, policy uh, implementers. So mostly the politicians. Yeah, so like you'll find that uh, one of the things that uh, how I apply, how I expect to apply this in future is uh, in my uh, research, uh, I try to coordinate uh, with uh, the indigenous communities uh, and listen to their view of science because they have dwelled in the society or in the place and they have depended on their indigenous uh, knowledge or know-how to survive in the environment. So that uh, whenever I come up with, uh, uh, whenever I do research, then my research is uh, driven uh, to uphold uh, or to uphold the rights of these communities as first priority. And also this will help the policy implementers to ensure that when they are implementing the policies, then the policies uh, are, uh, are implemented uh, while the rights of the communities are upheld. And also those who are implementing these policies, when we coordinate with them, then the policies will be data-driven. Thank you. Thank you very much. I can see people are sharing insights in the note. Thank you for that. So uh, I'd like to to tell you something about it. So, so um, as I uh, work at the Ministry of uh, Environment at Susan of Development, I personally I think that uh, we work for the open source to really Resolve the the problem about the free uh, planetary crisis, which have uh, a, a very very uh, important impact in the society, in the daily, uh, and uh, for the developing countries. It is very, okay. very difficult to understand the impact for the science in the environment because you lose your natural resource and uh, we live in the poverty uh, because of this uh, 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 natural resource uh, loss. So, I think that if the local population in the uh, developing countries can understand the really impact of science, open science, in their daily life. Okay. okay. Thank you very much, Edmund. We are a little bit cut short by time, so we won't take any other intervention, but I will encourage you to go to the notepad and type in any question you might have we are going to make sure that i will go i'm going to make sure that virginia gives an answer to them personally so thank you for being here on this session i would like to pass oh okay yes min has something to say please feel free to quickly say something hello um 
uh, answering your uh, question um, as a, a lecture i can uh, uh, benefit from open science uh, by uh, uh, providing free educational uh, resourcing and uh, discussion um, around collaboration research, which uh, enhancing the learning uh, uh, for students. Uh, for um, uh, co-founder open science community in Egypt, um, uh, I can uh, benefit uh, open science uh, uh, to uh, strength uh, um, par um, partnership with uh, other uh, research uh, in, uh, in association, uh, allowing me to ex uh, expanding the uh, community's re uh, reach and uh, achieve agree uh, impact in the uh, academic uh, community and the society as uh, a whole. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Yasmin. So I'd like to pass the floor to Irene for the closing remarks. Yeah, thank you, Atlas. And first, please help me give a round of applause to Virginia for giving us a really excellent presentation. Um, and I think that this really lays, lays the foundation for the rest of the cohort and the modules. So we will always come back to uh, the foundations of open science, talking about the values of open science, about collaboration and access to knowledge. So even as we are, we'll be talking about open tools next week, um, always please keep in mind these foundations about the, the purpose of open science, um, not just a, from a technical perspective, but also from a perspective of access and inclusivity. Uh, and also a round of applause to Esdras because this was an amazing uh, facilitation and uh, we will have Esdras with us for a few more sessions. Uh, so looking forward to that as well. Uh, just the closing reminder is that um, you will get me Virginia for a few coaching sessions if you're interested in talking to her more about her experience and about her background in marine biology. Uh, but also her experience with data management, with building communities of practice in open science. Um, so we will send instructions on how to join the coaching sessions in an email. It, I think it's going to be tomorrow. It might be earlier next week. Uh, we will ask you to tell us about your work and your interest. And uh, that way we can recommend the coaches that you um, can meet um, to talk more about your projects. But um, I think that's all for today. So thank you everyone for joining. Um, with this, I'm gonna stop the recording and I'll stay here for a few more minutes if anyone wants to ask like more specific questions um, that is that are not gonna be recorded. Thank you everyone and bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Irene, for everything. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you so You're much. Welcome. Bye.